in this commercialization of Christmas. Corporations okay. is what he's getting. Corporations, at. corporate fucking greed. What, not politicians. What I'm what I'm talking about is. Let's break back in. Break back in. Break back in. Okay. Ready? Okay. What were you talking about? I'm talking. The, I was just saying that it's all the same. It one way you look at it or another. No, nobody does anything these days, for the most part, if they're not going to get without a guarantee of profit. Right. Well, I and you know that once again goes into the, you know, whole idea that these companies make eighty percent. You know, retail companies in particular make eighty percent of their entire yearly profit over a six-week period. Mm-hmm. How is? Uh, I mean, well, in my opinion, how. in my opinion, <laughs> how is that sustainable? They've been doing it for years. But how is it sustainable long term? What if people stop celebrating Christmas? Think about this. Oh, okay. Right. Did you see that happening anytime in the next? 20 years? All it would take would be a movement. What kind of movement are you talking about? You know, Christmas lives matter. Who, who knows? <laughs> hey, I was trying to target Who knows? <laughs> I know what you're trying to get me to say. Well, see, now, now we're winding it back. Now, it's, now you're winding it back to a media perspective. Because these companies don't want Christmas to end. Well, so obviously, gonna, hence commercialization. Then, as as soon as as soon as somebody comes up with this movement about about uh, Christmas lives matter, it's going to be dead in the water from the start. Because, Ten, tentative name, right? Tentative name. It's going to be dead in the water from the start, and the person who came up with the idea is now every bad word that you can think of. Right. What right. it trickles well, down I mean, to is profit margins. Right. Yes, exactly. And, you know, as I said from the get-go of this was if these, you know, retail companies and everything are creating 80% of their balance sheet over a six-week period, it doesn't make any sense to me how most of these companies are still in business. It works. I mean, do they have you? Do you have you seen the analytics? Well, it works because people buy into it via the commercialization. Right. It's not hard to persuade the average person. There you're right. Yep, especially as in a group, like you're you're gonna Christmas wise, you have to buy other people gifts. And, and okay, what? Be, because it, because it's ba- well in a way it's do somewhat you? it's it's somewhat peer pressure in a way. Well, because if somebody buys me something, I have to buy to them, them something. Not necessarily. And, and and when you're growing up as a kid, you, you can always make have them something. You always have fond memories of receiving receiving gifts and the, the I old, like that better. You right. put more effort and thought into it. Uh, well, what I what I'm saying is I'm going to make you a macaroni Christmas tree this year. <laughs> Greg's going to make you something. I mean, if you want to make me a macaroni a macaroni Christmas tree, I'll hang careful, it up. Careful, I'll hang careful. it on my fridge. For for a month or two, but not all year. It's macaroni. I mean, don't go bad. But it, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like when you were a kid, you have fond memories of receiving gifts from it as a as a child, and you feel like you owe as as a parent or as a uncle or as a uh, uh, the older generation. You feel like that you sh- you have to return um, those memories, um, those those good memories. Uh, to, to the younger generation. So you're looking at it from basically what it is is a psychological standpoint. You you indoctrinate the younger I'm, I'm not to get the parents to buy them things so that you can make it's money. and does that not just you know it's cultural. Like it's, it's a cultural roll thing. into the right. it's part of the commercialization. There you go. It's into, there you yeah, go. it's ground into the uh, culture of um, not even not only American culture but to almost every culture around the world that has any, and any it might not even be a, culture, it might not even said. be Christmas. It might be a, a different, uh, maybe a different religion, religion celebrates celebrates a different holiday. Um, and, and but that's the just need a cultural to feel thing. involved. The gi- gifts, situation. gifts and giving. Well, is, is a I mean, I would be honest. Of, okay, a lot of yeah, hear me. I mean, I may kind of be like coming off as like screwed just here a little bit oh, and really, everything. Like, yeah. One might think, Fuck you. <laughs> but. 
I mean, I do enjoy giving gifts and everything, but I mean, it feels like to me at this point in time, the I don't necessarily want to say pressure, but the you know fact that you you know you feel basically obligated. obligated that's a great word um, to do this stuff, you know, on this particular day. Well, how do you feel about birthdays? You know what he told me on my birthday? You know the last birthday present I got? I have no idea, but but you know what I'm saying. Probably from when, him. When, when you, it was from him when I was 30. When you have a kid, when when there's a kid growing up, or 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 a spouse or a loved one, you By the buy way, them that's a gift. 10 years ago. Right. You buy them a gift. Back I, and forth. I, and you know what? I don't care. I, I view birthdays as just another day. It really is. Guess what? Same as but it's special. To, it's special to younger people, right? Yeah, people. I mean, I and and this this is my whole take on the basically commercialization. Well, no, just just on Christmas. Like, I if you are under the age of sixteen, guess what? 13. I will buy you a present. Sixteen. That's I will years. buy you some sort of present. <laughs> <laughs> granted, granted, here at these later You're years, a man now, granted, what? Granted, No. I, you want something, you gotta no. burn it now. Shut the fuck up. Granted, at this later point in time of my life, most of those presents are gift cards. I don't have time to, you know, handcraft and pick out and, you know, shop and do all this stuff. What are you doing nowadays? You have time. No. Make something. I don't have time. What are you doing? Physical therapy. <sighs> Once? Three times a week. Doctor's appointments. I mean... It takes an hour a day to make something. What am I going to make? Be creative, man. <laughs> I mean, if you really wanted to handle Hey, man, I'll I'm give sure you a spooch card. A spooch card? No, no thank you. <laughs> but it, anyways, like... I'm not even <laughs> if if anybody wanted if you wanted to make something for somebody if you really wanted to anybody could find time to do it and well, I'm not talking about that you guys are being retarded right now <laughs> one might think <laughs> but um <laughs> okay go ahead kid like your mustache tell me how much you're mad. Going? I I don't even know where I am anymore. <laughs> I don't know where I where I am in the conversation. I, I was I, I was getting to the a lot of people these days they have excuses for not having time for doing one thing or another. Um, where as it as it goes to uh, losing weight or or anything that they know that they they should be doing, but. Just because of the fact that they know they should be doing it, it's an excuse is the reason why they don't. Is the reason why they don't want to do it. So they make excuses for uh, my, uh, big is beautiful and and all all that other kind of stuff. If you really wanted to do something and and uh, it maybe if you even tried it or did it, like make make a handmade gift and give it to somebody, um, you might find more. Pride and joy in giving something that was uh, created from your own mind, uh, as opposed to just going thoughtful in, gift, right? Then, then just going to the store and getting a gift card.